We all ran, jumped in the ditch, sat there clinging to each other. Uh, one of the aircraft seen us, circled, strafed the ditch, hit the dirt, piled up beside the ditch, missing us probably three feet. I'm not sure how long we were in the ditch, but I, as I sat there, uh, I've been asked, you know, what my thoughts were at that time, and I guess my most vivid memory is, God, please don't let me die in this ditch. And the severe bombing of Pearl Harbor by airmen planes, undoubtedly Japanese. The city of Honolulu has also been attacked and considerable damage done. This battle has been going on for nearly three hours. I was born in a small town by the name of Gunter, G-E-N-T-E-R, 35 miles northeast of Dallas. April the 24th, 1940. Fresh out of high school, I joined the Navy. December the 6th, I boarded uh, a USS tanker loaded with 6 million gallons of fuel oil, departed for Pearl Harbor. At any rate, I arrived at Pearl Harbor on December the 12th, 1940. Uh, VP-23, it eventually became, at that time it was VP-26, but uh, that's the squadron I joined when I arrived. I had a great crew in the Navy. This uh, was an 11-man crew. Uh, three officers and uh, eight enlisted men. You had, the, you had the pilot, co pilot, navigator, two radio men, bombardier, plane captain, two, two waist hatch gunners, a tail gunner, and a tunnel gunner. We had just fell in for muster. We were lined up in our hangar when the section leader began roll call. We heard a screaming aircraft and moments later a terrible explosion. We ran outside the hangar and uh, the hangar beside us, BP-21, uh, had received the first bomb that fell on Fort Island about 100 yards from me. Uh, it was engulfed in smoke and flame, and it so happened that uh, our aircraft, our PBYs, were parked between the two hangars. The bomb was close enough that uh, most of our aircraft were damaged. And incidentally, when we ran out, the well, first thing we seen was a circling aircraft overhead with the rising sun insignia. We immediately knew what happened and uh, everything goes through your mind. I've been asked so many times, what were your thoughts at that time? But you have so many, it's hard to describe, I guess. Fear, anger, uh, surprise, whatever, you know. Prior to the uh, second wave, I seen uh, all the ships up, uh, battleship rolling fire, the Arizona, the West Virginia, the Tennessee, Nevada, Oklahoma, California. It was a devastating fight, sight I'll never forget. Uh, after the first wave hit, we had construction crews. The Oklahoma, uh, battleship Oklahoma had turned turtle up. The keel of the ship was up. We had construction crews out there on the bottom of the ship, cutting holes in the bottom of the ship, uh, rescuing seamen trapped inside. In April or May the 26th, my squadron and two others were on the way to Midway. Begin our search for the Japanese fleet. They'd been airborne two hours, searching for the Japanese fleet, running low on fuel. But the commander, Lieutenant Commander Wade McCluskey, says we're going to press on just a little longer. And just moments later, he spotted the white wake of a fast-moving Japanese destroyer, and he says, that ship has to be racing to join, rejoin the main fleet. We'll follow it. They found three aircraft carriers diving from 20,000 feet. They sunk three aircraft carriers in, in four minutes. It so happened that uh, I was airborne at 4 o'clock that morning armed with four, with the four or five hundred pound bombs. Early afternoon, we found a submarine surfaced, unmanned, all hatches were closed. We dropped the first bomb on the fan tail, made another run, dropped another five hundred pounder behind the conning tower, and we made six circles around it, watching all kind of debris surface. Uh, we assumed we sunk the sub. But a lot of times in a, in a, in a PBY, uh, you had two 50 caliber machine guns on, in the tail with, inside a blister. A lot of times if an enemy aircraft was approaching, if they seen that blister grow up, they'd pull away. They weren't, all, they, weren't, they weren't all that brave all the time. 
It's now thought that President Roosevelt wanted this to happen so we could join the British in the fight for their own kingdom. And even though we lost all those lives, it might have been a blessing in disguise. So what would, what, cause what would have happened if we had allowed Hitler to take over England? I'm very happy that I'm still here to talk about it, but uh, I'm glad that I played a small part. <laughs>